Amphibians are extremely versatile creatures with so many different ways to thrive. Their diverse pool of skills and designs alone are enough to fill up a whole book of ideas, but there is a trio of frog-based Pokemon that deserve a closer look, as we here at the Ranger Base lead you in this three-part special, Amazing Amphibians, Warriors of Nature. In this Ranger Log series, I want to discuss three frog species of Pokemon that have some incredible unique traits and inspirations, while also discussing just how important these pond hoppers really are. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and follow us on social media to stay up to date with the latest happening here. Frogs reside in many different areas, usually ponds or places with high moisture. They can also reside in some of the most dangerous and mucky areas, and they just might be one of the most dangerous creatures you run into. That goes double for the first frog Pokemon of this series. Residing in the Great Marsh of Pastoria City is one of the fiercest poison types out there. You had better not let your guard down near them, or they will take you down. It's the Krogunk line. Krogunk is super unique as it's the only Pokemon with a type combination of poison and fighting type, making it very dangerous in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Its design consists of a purple body with large orange cheek pouches that store its poisons. It also has these black hands with orange middle fingers, which might have some interesting origins, but I'll get to that later. Now, I've mentioned in the past that most animals come from a certain common ancestor or starting point, and with frogs and toads, the most common starting place is the tadpole. Obviously, Krogunk and its evolved form are based on frogs, mainly those in the poison dart frog family. Known as one of the most dangerous families of frogs, the poison dart is known for two major things, its color and its strong poison. These two things aren't disconnected, as its colors and brightness can indicate a high level of danger. The standard traits of the dart frog are bright, unnatural colors like blues, purples, and bright yellows, usually all of them having black stripes and or spots. Other variations might have bright stripes with completely contrasting colors like blues and oranges on one frog alone. Now, these colors don't have any direct meaning, but animals, usually reptiles, that have bright and unusual colors are known to be dangerous usually very poisonous, which allows them to live with very little worry from predators. Also, I want to know how you guys would react to seeing a frog like this in your backyard. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, let's look a little bit closer at Krogunk and its colors. It has a very noticeable blue color, much like the standard blue of the poison dart frog, with bright orange cheek sacs which hold its poison. Notice I said poison, as there is a difference between poison and venom. Poison is a substance that is ingested, usually through the mouth or through skin contact. Venom is when something needs to be injected, usually through a bite or a sharp object. Now, these sacs on Krogunk's cheeks allow it to spit out poisonous gases and other materials. However, it does have a move that it specializes in called Poison Jab. You notice that orange finger that it has? This is similar to its cheek sacs, and it's most likely where the majority of the poison is generated for the physical moves. Now, I have a quick quiz for you guys. Is the name Poison Jab the correct use of the word poison? If you answered yes, you are correct. If you look at how Poison Jab is used, you will notice that the poison energy is generated around Krogunk's hand as it releases a jab at the opponent. Now, what was that difference between poison and venom? One needs to be ingested, and the other needs to be injected. While it may look like Krogunk is stabbing into an enemy, it's really just releasing a strong and steady punch coated in poison that is making skin contact. Notice that there's nothing sharp to inject into their targets. Krogunk is very impressive for its poison capabilities and for its physical skills as a fighting type. Its fighting typing is actually represented on its body by the white stripes on its torso. This is actually based on a Japanese wardrobe called a sarashi, or a bleached cloth. It's basically a piece of cloth worn by samurai as a form of undergarment, and could be cut as a makeshift bandage or wrapping if needed. Also, the main purpose of this cloth was that if a samurai was cut in battle, this cloth could be tightened to help keep their insides, well, on their inside until they got help. Nowadays, they are used more for fashion, mainly for people who want to look tough or intimidating, men and women alike. It's pretty common to see a tough anime character wearing one of these. I mean, why wouldn't wearing something similar to guys who would cut each other up make you look tougher, right? 
Now, in some ways, Krogunk could be considered a type of wandering warrior, mainly in its demeanor and the way it fights. However, its level of kindness will always depend on how well it likes you. While both Krogunk and Poison Dart Frogs are known for being dangerous and deadly for most creatures, most people don't realize that both of them are very useful in their respective medical fields. The Dart Frog is known to produce one of the most dangerous toxins known to man, but I bet you didn't know that it could actually be used to help cure people and help a whole lot in the medical field. However, if you want to be super helpful, then you should consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. We here at the Ranger Base are supported by amazing fans and viewers like you, and every little bit of support from a like to a comment that says hi helps us so much. Thank you all for sticking around and enjoying my content. Now, if you have seen my Zubat episode, you might recall just how useful a toxic substance can be for the medical field, and if you haven't, I highly recommend watching that video, it's really good. These wonderful amphibians are extremely helpful in both the Pokemon world and the real world. Poison dart frog toxins can actually affect nerves, which in this case can give someone a heart attack. However, scientists have recreated the toxin and have discovered that they can use this to help people who have certain disorders that cause their nerves to hurt called man on fire disease. Similarly, Krogunk is very popular in the medical scene of the Pokemon world, as their poisons can be used to help treat aches and pains, and most popularly, lower back pains. Because Krogunk's poison is so useful, it's actually a mascot for the pharmaceuticals of the Pokemon world. Of course, Krogunk are pretty mild-mannered and sociable. In comparison to its evolved form, that is. Krogunk is a Pokemon that really only fights to ensure its survival, otherwise being pretty calm and to itself. That isn't to say that they don't like to test out their abilities and occasionally flex their strength. When a Krogunk decides to increase its strength, it will train until its power overflows, eventually gaining a new form and a new temperament. Toxicroak isn't too different from its previous form. However, it's gotten a good bit bigger and has a few new accessories that it uses very well. It's pretty clear that Toxicroak is still pretty heavily influenced by the poison dart frog. In fact, its poison is even more dangerous now. Notice that its cheek sacs have now become a whole jaw sack, and apparently they will croak and vibrate their poisons, mixing them up inside their jaw to make them even more volatile. Now, it's more than likely that due to the strength of their poisons and the relatively aggressive nature of Toxicroak, they won't be getting into too many popularity contests in the medical field. However, you might be waiting for me to explain exactly what is up with these spikes on Toxicroak's hands and feet. Well, this is one of the very interesting influences on this line. As it evolves, Toxicroak also gains inspirations from a species of frog called the Hairy Frog. Also known as the Wolverine Frog, this amphibian is crazy for its super unique and, frankly, disturbing ability to give itself claws on its hands and feet by breaking its toes. Yikes, am I right? However, it doesn't look like Toxicroak needs to do this to have these dangerous spikes on its body. However, this does slightly change its poisons as it can now more easily inject its toxins with a clean jab. This would make some of its toxins into venoms. However, a majority of them don't need to be injected as it's more of an alternative way to injure opponents rather than the default. Of course, Pokemon can always go much deeper. In fact, what if I told you that this line of Pokemon is one of the few that were actually related to another Pokemon line? There is a surprising amount of frog-based Pokemon in this series. However, I'm amazed how long it took me to realize that there is a strong connection between the poison-spitting Krogunk line and the ground-shaking Seismitoad line. However, that is a topic for part two of this three-part series. Connections and relations are just another solid example of the close connections between the Pokemon world and the real world. I'm glad you all decided to stop by today, and if you enjoyed this first part of this series, or you have any idea who else will be discussed in this series, then please leave a comment below. We are super excited to explore this wide world of Pokemon with you all, and we hope you decided to join us on our journey. Until next time, keep exploring trainers!